Are you on the fence about making the purchase of those $360 Copilot for Microsoft 365 licenses? It seems like every time we turn around, there's a new add-on for Microsoft 365 eating into our IT budgets. I know this is the quandary of many who are now newly eligible to add on this subscription, as having to commit nearly $400 per employee who might find this tool useful is a very different equation than adding on a $30 license and trying it for a couple of months. I am definitely among the 77% of users that Microsoft reports don't want to give up Copilot for Microsoft 365 now that I've been using it for a few months. I believe it saves me time every day, but I also see that this is difficult to fully quantify on an individual basis, and I understand the hesitation many people have in making the jump. In this video, I want to highlight three aspects of how I've used Copilot for Microsoft 365 that I think save me the most time. And for me, these three features, among others I use less frequently, deliver that $30 a month of time-saving value that justifies my investment in these licenses. Make sure you watch through to the end though, because I'm going to finish up by considering in more general terms how we should think about the ROI of tools like Copilot and how you might go about working out as an individual or manager whether Copilot will be a good investment for you. As always, where I'm showing on screen demos in this video, I'm doing so in a protected demo environment and none of the information you're seeing is anyone's private data. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. If you're interested in working with me, or you'd like to learn more about my book on AI adoption for SMEs, who's in the Copilot seat, check out the links below. One of the most valuable features I've found of Copilot is its inclusion in Teams, and specifically using it as a tool after meetings to quickly get up to speed on what was discussed. I've made videos here before about the Teams Premium Intelligent Recap feature that allows you to get an AI-powered summary and other information after your meeting. That feature is now also part of Copilot for Microsoft 365, but with Copilot, your options go way beyond just getting an AI-generated summary. After a meeting, we can head over to the recap screen. It can take a few minutes for your summary to appear, but even if it hasn't yet, you can start interrogating the content with Copilot. The recaps do a great job of capturing the essence of the meeting, but sometimes you want to know something different or more specific. So for this screen, I can open Copilot and then just start interacting with the content of the meeting. For example, I can ask for a summary and it'll prepare something similar to what that intelligent recap will eventually be, or even for a list of action items. Another example of how I use this is to help me with my digital transformation coaching sessions that I do one-on-one -on -one with clients. If this is something that might interest you, take a look at the links below to find out more. And as part of this, I send them a recording of our meeting along with a customized follow-up email. Before Copilot, I was using Intelligent Recap to get a summary of the meeting and then just pasting this into an email and editing it as I needed. My focus was to try to align the content of the summary with the agenda topics the client expressed before the session. Now with Copilot, I can just give it those themes in a prompt and ask it to draft that email. This probably saves me five to 10 minutes per one hour session I host, turning a job that took 10 or 15 minutes into five minutes of checking the draft and light editing. But jumping back into Teams, let's give this an example of saying, what did Adele say about the fabulously fun spaceship project? You may have heard about this before. I've used it in a lot of demos. And you can see that Copilot is able to answer that specific question, and you can take that response and use it elsewhere if you want. The key here is that a meeting summary really serves just one purpose, but changing around your prompt, you can use Copilot to leverage exactly the same information to drive whatever the next step of your particular process is. Now though, we can also approach this from Microsoft 365 chat. Here, I can ask it to prepare an email summary of the meeting for Adele and include action items. I can reference the specific meeting in my prompt and it'll go ahead and create that draft. And now what I can also do, which is a new feature, is pull that draft email directly over to Outlook to send it. But if you think that's smart, you'll love this. I can be a lot less specific with Copilot. Here I just ask, do I have any outstanding actions that I need to complete for Adele? I reference her as a user in the request. So this only works for people who are in your tenant exactly like this but you can see it immediately finds the actions I set in relation to that meeting. 
This though isn't limited to meetings. If you've committed to things in email or Teams chat, it'll find those too. These capabilities do have some limitations. First, in most scenarios, you have to have turned meeting transcription on to get the full benefit, although there are options to be able to use Copilot in meeting without transcription. Second, they are only available for experiences in your own tenant. However, if you have a lot of internal meetings or you host a lot of meetings with outside parties, this can very quickly become a really valuable tool to keep you up to speed. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up to help it get in front of more interested people. And if you'd like to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button too. Thanks. Keeping in the theme of Microsoft 365 chat, there's a really useful feature here that I use a lot that isn't immediately obvious, and I'm not sure everyone knows about it. From a high level overview, Microsoft 365 chat is understood as a tool to work with internal company information in your Microsoft 365 tenant. And if you want to use information from the web, you have to jump over to Copilot instead. This is what is implied by the work and web switch you see at copilot.microsoft.com. However, by default, if your organization hasn't turned this capability off, it's really easy to mix the two in one chat. If you switch over to work results, you can see Microsoft 365 chat. You can turn on the web content plugin using this switch in the chat box. From there, you can have a chat that allows you to bring in references to your internal content alongside web results. For example, I've received the itinerary for an upcoming trip. I can ask Copilot about my travel and hotel arrangements during the trip, and it finds this information from the itinerary file stored in my OneDrive. As a follow-up, I can turn on the Web Results plugin, and then I can ask it to tell me about the hotel. And it does this using web search results. I can even follow up again, asking for check-in or check-out details. This is a far better flow than having to jump from one service to another for internal or external data, as the chat maintains its context along the way. The big limitation I've found on this right now is that you don't seem to be able to include both internal and external references in one response, which adds an extra step in a dialogue like this. But I think that makes sense because it does make it a lot clearer what internal data is being used to make a web search. I'm unsure whether this is a hard limitation or just a blocker on how I've been using it. I've not been able to find any specific reference to this limitation in any documentation. Let me know down in the comments if you know the answer to this. For me, this is a good time saver, as often there will be references to products or activities in documents or emails I'm working with, which require a search of the web for more context. I often use Microsoft 365 chat for a quick catch up on something, and the ability for it to add value like this to that contextual information is very powerful. I work in OneNote all the time. I write my notes related to these videos there, but I also use it as my base for everything to do with my work, from information on client projects to random ideas. OneNote is probably the Microsoft 365 app I'm using the most. And frankly, I'm a little underwhelmed by the Copilot for Microsoft 365 integration in OneNote as it stands. But there is one feature that I found myself using a lot recently that certainly helps to make my workflow easier. I'll get onto that in just a minute. Why am I underwhelmed by Copilot in OneNote? Well, there's no easy way to generate content there. If you look at the interface in Word, it has two components. A prompting box to allow you to generate text, either from your prompt or from other Microsoft 365 content. And it has a sidebar where you do things like summarize content. In OneNote, despite it having largely similar and some would argue more versatile text creation capabilities than Word, there is no text generation interface here. This comes back to one of my earlier critiques of Copilot. Right now, while Copilot is very well integrated into the Microsoft 365 apps from a user interface perspective, the experience of using it in each app is very rigidly defined by what Microsoft thinks you should be using that app for. My hope is that over time it will become more flexible so that core tooling like text generation can just be working the same everywhere, whether it's in Word or OneNote or PowerPoint or even a text box in Excel. However, the Copilot feature I do really like in OneNote is the easy ability to insert a page summary. You just head up to the page, right click on it and hit summarize. And before you know it, there's a summary at the top of the page. This, by the way, is summarizing the introduction to my new AI course, which will be made available on my website in the coming weeks, including over an hour of brand new AI-focused video content you won't find anywhere else. 
So keep on the lookout for that. And if you want to find out about it first, there's a link below to join my mailing list. If summarizing a page isn't enough though, it'll also let you summarize entire sections, creating a section summary as the first page. Depending on how you use OneNote, both of these can be powerful tools, but in different ways. I find that the page summaries are most useful, particularly when I've been using a page to ideate and need to quickly get back into that flow. To give you an example of how I use this, I will often switch between several different projects during a single day, and all my notes are in OneNote. If I come back to a page of notes, I need to get back into that headspace. I use the summary function to quickly give me an overview that most of the time gives me what I need to realign to that project. Getting the most from Copilot for Microsoft 365 involves a new approach to learning technology, building skills in being the supervisor of an AI companion rather than someone who just learned which buttons to press on that new app to get X tasks done. Do you need help in engaging and training your team to be part of your co-pilot journey? My company, Bright Ideas Agency, can help. Whether you're looking for a single training course or broad support to guide your adoption, we have options to meet your needs. In fact, I even wrote a book on this. So to inquire about training or other AI adoption support, or to buy a copy of the book, check out the links below. Microsoft's research with early Copilot for Microsoft 365 customers suggests that the average user saves about 1.2 hours each week using the product. Last week it was pointed out to me that using Microsoft's numbers to show the efficacy of a Microsoft product might be somewhat naive, but my response to that was that it fits fairly well with my experience so far. This isn't a tool that saves you hours each day, it saves you minutes, but those minutes add up and what they add up to is worth far more in production than the $30 per month or even $360 per year I'll be spending on my license. The difficulty with this technology is that it's kind of weird assessing its value. If you estimate each of your employees spends 15 minutes a month on some spreadsheet filling out information for their expenses, and then you institute a new app that lets them snap a copy of their receipt and get it recorded immediately, then you're gonna be pretty clear on what benefit you're looking for as it's the same benefit for every employee. But Copilot is different. I've highlighted to you where I think it saves me the most time, but even someone doing a largely similar job might use it pretty differently because how they do their work is different to me. Instead of suddenly being able to make the whole expenses processing system easier for everyone, which is the technology change paradigm we're used to, we are now looking for some people to respond to emails quicker, for others to spend less time catching up on their meetings, and others still blocking off less time in their calendar for wrangling PowerPoint the next time you ask them to present some slides at the team meeting. The age of the time of motion study is long gone, so how do we truly assess value? If what we get from Copilot is a very personal experience, then our assessment of value needs to be personal too. It's possible to look at broad metrics within your organization that might make sense related to the users you've deployed this to, such as revenue generated or meetings booked. But we also need to create forums to listen to our users, to share usage stories, and to spread the benefits as widely as possible. Microsoft has an approach to this framed at establishing a center of excellence, which is essentially a Teams and SharePoint template designed to maximize your communication about Copilot. This will provide a forum from which you can share those personal stories to grasp the side of Copilot ROI, which is subjective, alongside those harder objective metrics you're getting from your Microsoft 365 Admin Center reports or elsewhere in your business. The fact is though, that even in the short time I've been using Copilot for Microsoft 365, I've seen improvements that make it even quicker and more intuitive to operate. And the time saving in having all your contextual information from Microsoft 365 right there versus using a tool like ChatGPT, where you have to keep gathering the information you're working with, is in my opinion, the killer feature of this tool. It makes AI accessible to anyone, rather than just those who care enough about it to change around what they're doing until it fits into their workflow. I've told you that I'm among the 77% who won't be giving Copilot back. Are you joining me? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.